Hi there, I'm Shelly Gray from ShellyGrayTeaching.com and welcome to this support video for a new math station that I'm really excited about, the Multi-Digit Multiplication Station. Now if you're watching this video, I'm hoping that you've arrived here in a link from a PDF file um, that you probably purchased on Teachers Pay Teachers. Now this is the support video, so this will help you get your, mul your multi-digit uh, multiplication station all set up and it will give you a quick overview of exactly how it all works. Now I know that as you're scrolling through that file um, with all the information, it's overwhelming because there's so much information. So the reason that I do these support videos is so that you can you know, watch a short video and hopefully it'll take some of your overwhelm away and make you more comfortable with the entire process of setup and getting started with math stations in your classroom. Um, now, just a side note, if you've used other math stations in the past of mine, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, if you've used any of these, this video will be fairly repetitive for you. Um, it's the same familiar format as that you're used to with all of the other math stations. So I really don't think that watching this is even really necessary uh, if you've already used some of the other ones. Um, now, just a quick backstory. If you've Again, if you've used my other stations, you've heard this story probably a million times, but I just want to tell it um, just so that you understand where the idea of these self-paced, student-centered math stations came from. So uh, years ago now, in my first year of teaching, I got to the um, spot in the curriculum where I was teaching multiplication, just basic facts, to my grade three and four students. And I, it, I realized that some of my students had no knowledge of multiplication yet, no idea what it even meant, and then I had some students that already knew how to multiply. They'd already, you know, memorized equations, some of them. And so I, I was wondering how I was ever going to accommodate all of my different levels of learners that I had in my classroom and do a good job of teaching to everyone. So I came up with this idea where I got a box. At the time, it was just a old cardboard box, I think. I got a bunch of file folders, put some activities in each one that I just printed off of random websites, and I made this math station, basically, uh, that students could move through at their own pace. Now, back then, it wasn't very strategic. Um, you know, the quality was probably fairly low just because I was printing random worksheets off of the internet, but my students loved it. They, they begged to do it all the time. Um, it was even the, the struggling students in my classroom just ate this up. They loved it. And what I realized later on, after a while, was that the reason that they loved it so much was because they were in full control of their learning. So they had the, the power to move at their own pace and to, to feel smart no matter what level they were at. So over the years, I revamped that station many times. That became the original multiplication station that focuses on basic facts and made it much more strategic, uh, much more engaging even. And since then, I've had literally thousands of teachers use it in their classrooms with huge success. Um, and I've made other math stations along the same lines that follow the same format for all the other operations plus fractions. And I literally hear from teachers every single day that their students are begging to work on these math stations. Um, they just can't get enough. They want to take it home for homework. They want to work on it over spring break. Um, they, 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 I've, I have teachers tell me almost every day that if their students could, they would just work on math stations all day long. And so I'm really excited to introduce you to the multi-digit multiplication station, which is an extension of the original multiplication station. Um, okay, so why are the stations so engaging? Well, the big reason is because they incorporate basic principles of student engagement. So this includes power, fun, and freedom. Um, when students have these needs met, you will find that they are much more engaged with what they are doing. So with the math stations, every student is um, working to his or her full potential. So they, they have the power and the freedom to move through at a pace that's just right for them. They don't have to move along with anyone else in the classroom. And they're totally focused on themselves and they can um, they do the marking by themselves they're self-checking they are um, using their metacognition to to uh, decide how they learn best they really are in full control and that's what makes these stations so engaging so it might look to you like it's just a box but really it's magic that happens when you start using math stations in your classroom 
Okay, so let's talk about the big goals of using the multi-digit multiplication station in your classroom. Now, you might assume that the big goal is to learn how to multiply. And yes, that is a big goal, but there's even bigger goals that we are trying to achieve. The biggest one is confidence. We want our students to feel really smart and really successful, and we want to boost their confidence because when students feel good about how they are performing or what they are doing, they are more motivated. Those just go hand in hand. So confidence is a big one that we want to encourage. Um, also, we want our students to be excited about what they're learning. So again, when students are excited, they're performing at optimal levels. They want to do the work. Uh, it just makes all the difference in the world when you can have these things happening in your classroom. The, uh, another big goal, huge goal actually, is success for every student in your classroom. Now, we know that you have um, probably some students at the low end, some students at the high end, and a whole bunch of students in the middle. Now, differentiating your instruction in order to meet all of those students at the level that they're at is a really hard thing to do. This station is going to help you with that. So no matter what level your students are at, we want them to be working at a level that is challenging for them and that they can experience success with. So this is going to help you do that and ensure that every student here in your classroom is experiencing some sort of success, even if it looks different for each one of them. Um, now, another big goal, let's get to the math portion, is creative thinking. Now, I have found over the years that people in general, parents, teachers, what have you, have really strong opinions about math. And this mostly comes down to how they learned as a child and just beliefs about how it should be taught today. So um, anytime that I post anything about math um, on Facebook or wherever it should be, I get a lot of strong opinions. And so there's some, um, you know, when you start uh, teaching different strategies that focus more on mental math, you have a whole bunch of people um, complaining that math is too confusing now and what's wrong with the old methods and the new math, you know, is crazy, um, all this kind of stuff. We also have the other extreme um, of, of teachers or, or parents or whoever saying that we shouldn't be teaching the old ways like long multiplication because there's no number sense understanding. We should be focusing more on strategies that pr uh, promote good number sense understanding. So there's those two opposite extremes. And then you have the people in the middle who like to teach a variety of methods and figure out what works for each student. So I will tell you that I'm probably one of those more people that's more in the middle. I never like to go to either extreme, um, but I do understand that we have a whole bunch of different um, ability levels in our classrooms. And I like to teach a bunch of different strategies and then let students pick which works the best for them. So you will find in my resources that I don't necessarily fall just to one extreme or the other. I kind of tend to stick in the middle and pr provide students with as many tools as I can and then let them choose what works the best because we know that one strategy or one tool is not going to work the same for one student as it will for another one. So that's kind of where I stand on the whole math, you know, new math, old math thing. Um, so just to let you know, this station, there are um, 15 levels. Now they start with very high number sense understanding, uh, very focused on number sense, I should say. So uh, we start out with multiplying by tens, hundreds, thousands, um, with the commutative and associative properties, uh, the distributive property. We move on to strategies like partial products and the box or window or area model, some people call it. Those are amazing for number sense understanding. And if you don't already know those strategies, you will soon. Um, then the last couple of levels in the multiplication, in the multi-digit multiplication station cover other strategies that don't necessarily focus so highly on number sense understanding. And that is um, lattice multiplication, which is really cool actually, if you don't know that strategy yet, um, and traditional long multiplication with carrying and um, you know the the old way so you need to choose um, how you want to do this in your classroom there I know there's some teachers 
who don't even want to touch lattice multiplication or traditional long multiplication in their classrooms, and that's fine. What that means is that you would just end after the partial product strategy. So you would end after level 11. Maybe you would use the last few levels as enrichment for some of your students who are really grasping um, the mental math focused uh, strategies really well. Um, other teachers, you might wanna let students move through right till the end, see what works best, but you're going to have to really be your own judge here and make sure that your students aren't getting too confused. I've, I've included a lot of strategies, so I really recommend that if you have struggling students who are struggling with multi-digit multi multiplication, that you teach them the really um, mental math focused strategies such as partial products and box and window, and maybe you leave out long multiplication for those students. Okay. If you have students that can handle it, I see no problem with letting them learn everything they can and then they can choose what works best for them. So that's somewhere in this station that you're going to have to use your discretion um, just to decide what is going to work best for each individual student in your class. All right, so let's talk about exactly how the multi-digit multiplication station works and a little bit of setup. So first of all, you're going to need a box. I get my station boxes at Walmart for about $15. I like the ones that have lids on them, um, but really you can use any box. A cardboard box would work just fine as long as it fits letter-sized file folders. Inside the box, you have a bunch of folders. Each folder has a different activity in it that students are going to be working through on their own. Now, as far as file folders go, I buy the boxes of folders that have um, four different colors. I like to alternate colors for each level and then it just helps it stay a little bit more visual for students but honestly you don't need the colored folders even if you just have those old beige style ones that's perfect it works. Now each folder um, I should mention too this box holds hanging folders. Um, I've had other stations that don't have the hanging folders just regular letter size folders and either way it works fine. Now on each folder, you are going to be labeling it with a letter and number code. So you'll notice that this folder is labeled 2A and 2B, and that just means that those are the activities that are found inside the folder. So if we open it up, we have um, some activity sheets fastened with a paper clip, which is my personal preference that they stay organized. We have 2A on one side, and they're double-sided, so the other side has 2B. Now also inside the file folder, are your answer keys because in these math stations, students are self-checking their own work. So the answer keys, you'll see that you have 2A and 2B here. I highly recommend mounting the answer keys on colored paper. It helps them stand out from everything else in the station so that students know um, when they're looking for an answer key. They're, it, just, it just helps them uh, pick out the answer keys from everything else. And I also highly, highly recommend laminating the answer keys um, these are going to be used by every student in your class because they're all self-checking in their own work. They'll be taking them back and forth to desks or tables. Um, they're going to be touched a lot. So if you take the time to laminate them now, they will stand up much better to all the wear and tear. And also, you'll have them ready for next year as well. You can use these for years. So highly recommend taking the time to, um, to mount and laminate before. Now, basically... Students are just going to work through the station at their own pace. So everybody is going to start at level one and they are going to take out the activity sheets, complete them, come back to the station, get the answer keys, self-check, make any necessary corrections and move on to the next activity. And this is just what students are doing the entire time. So it becomes very, very routine. Now at the end of a level, uh, students are going to come to you and they're going to ask you for a test. Now on their assessment tracker, which each student will be using, it will tell them when it's time for a test. So they will come to you. You will just give them, this is, a, I, I mean, I don't, I, I really don't even like using the word test because this is just an oral assessment is all it is um, for you to make sure that you're happy with their progress within the level and their knowledge of the strategy. So you can use these assessment cards that I've prepared for you. And basically, you're just asking them a few questions that focus on the strategy that they learned in that level. So for instance, if they were um, working on the partial products level, you're just going to ask them a few questions and, and assess their knowledge of the partial product strategy. Now, uh, this is an oral assessment. This is not a paper and pencil test. And I, I have some teachers asking me sometimes um, if they can just do the test 
you know, on their own pencil and paper and then hand it in later? My answer is always uh, no, at least that's not my preference because you can learn so much more about how your students are performing when you actually are face to face with them and assessing them orally rather than just taking in a paper that they completed on their own. Um, it, it really doesn't take very much time. One to two minutes is all that these assessments are going to take you and you will gain so much more knowledge about, um, about where they're at. So I really, really um, encourage you to do the oral assessments as they're laid out in the station. Now, if you're happy with their performance on the level and their knowledge of the strategy, they are free to move on to the next level. If you're not happy, uh, suppose that, you know, you just think that they could do a little bit better than what they did um, with that strategy. There's no negative consequences to this. All that they're going to do is go back and practice a little bit more with that strategy, maybe do some different activities, and then they come back to you when they feel like they're ready again. So this is another way to uh, promote metacognition because they are thinking about their own learning and their own knowledge and when they're ready to be assessed. So this is a really important part of the station. Um, you're going to notice that after about a week of students using this station, that you are really going to move from a role of a teacher to a role of a facilitator. Because the routine becomes so automatic for your students and because they're moving through at their own pace. So there will come a time, um, probably in the second week of using the station, when you're going to be able to kind of stand back and watch all this stuff happening in your classroom um, by itself. Because the students are in charge, they're in control, and they know what they're doing all the time. So it's a really neat feeling once this all comes together. So I'm really excited for you to experience that in your classroom. Um, now also, I should talk about the pedagogical principles that are woven into the station, which there are many, but there's two that I really wanna point out to you um, that are woven into how the levels work. So when we teach a new skill, we first of all want to isolate it. And that means that we focus only on that skill, right? We're not gonna overwhelm students with a whole bunch of new strategies all at once. We'll focus on one. So every level focuses on a different strategy. So for instance, um, there's one level on multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000. Um, so at first, we're going to focus only on that strategy. Now at the end of the level, once they've had a chance to master that strategy and work with it, then we can integrate the strategies that they've learned before that. So every level um, has isolation and integration woven right into it. Um, as another example, when they start using, uh, learning more strategies for let's say like a traditional long multiplication equation, they might have learned lattice multiplication, box and window, and partial products. So at the end of every level, we're going to ask students, okay, now, um, you know, once they've mastered the partial product strategy, or I, let's say lattice multiplication, once they've mastered that one, now let's try using partial products and box and window. Now we're integrating all those different ones. The goal here, is to equip students with all these different tools, all these different strategies, so that they are able to choose which one works best. Okay, so that's how the isolation and integration works with each level. Okay, so the, the multi-digit multiplication station, as with all of my other stations, starts fairly easy and moves on and gets fairly difficult, very difficult actually by the end because they're learning high level strategies. So um, I do often have teachers asking me if their students could just start at level four or something, if they've got some students who are, have already mastered all of the initial concepts. I usually encourage teachers to start every student at level one, just because um, the first few levels are intended as a confidence booster. So your students, when they start with really easy work, it's going to give them a confidence boost. It's going to make them feel really smart and really successful right off the bat so that when they get to those harder levels, they are ready for a bit more of a challenge. So I do encourage you to be uh, to start all your students at the beginning of this station. Um, we know that kids don't like math when they don't feel any good at it. So that's why we want to make them feel really good about their abilities right from the beginning. Um, also, as I mentioned before, we do begin, the most of the levels in this station have a, have a high focus on mental math. Um, on place value understanding, et cetera. You, um, as I mentioned though, the last few levels are more, um, you know, with the long multiplication, the traditional way, 
or lattice multiplication that has a low focus on mental math. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's your choice whether or not you include those strategies. Um, I do recommend using them as enrichment though if you're not going to teach them to your whole class, just because they will work really well for some of your students that already possess excellent number or sense understanding. All right, let's talk about assessment. So during the math station time, there are two types of assessment that is going on um, a lot of the time. The first one is informal assessment. So this is just your assessment that you are doing all the time as you circulate the classroom, um, as you work with individual students, maybe with small groups. This is what is driving your instruction. So this is not a test, but this is just observations um, as you circulate and as you work with students. So in my mind, this is really the most important form of assessment because it, you're using it to drive your instruction. Um, to decide what you're going to do next and to see how everybody's moving along. Um, now this is a great time to identify students that are struggling and pull them aside for individual mini lessons or small group mini lessons. This is what might be happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, now at the end of every level, as I mentioned before, comes your formal assessment. So this is your test that students are going to come and ask you for. I encourage you to keep these tests uh, like I said before, I don't even like to call them a test because it's just a simple oral assessment, but I, I encourage you to keep these very low stress and low anxiety for your students. You don't want them to get test anxiety. They should enjoy this entire process. So please keep the, um, you know, keep it really low stress for your students. Now, if you've used my other math stations, you've heard this story before, if you've watched my other videos, but I always feel like it's important to tell this story. Um, my first year teaching when I did start using uh, the multiplication state or a version of today's multiplication station. I had one student who had really bad test anxiety every time that he got to the end of a level. Um, you know, there were tears and, and it just wasn't good for him. Uh, he had no reason to be anxious because he was a top student and always knew all of his facts. But it was just um, the process, I think, of coming to my desk and standing there and having a test that made him really anxious. So what I did with him was we walked the halls together and I just asked him his facts as we walked the halls and he loved it. He was very successful with that and it worked well all the time. So I just like to tell that story because um, to encourage you that if you do have students that experience anxiety with assessments or with tests, please find some way that works for them and help them with that because, you know, we really don't want tears or anxiety or any of that. So make sure that, that the methods that you're using fit that individual student as well. Okay, and as far as assembly of the station, I want to encourage you to take um, a few hours, this is gonna take you a few hours to set up, and get it all done in one shot. Um, I've had people ask me before if it's okay if they just get the first few levels done and then get students started and then kind of add more levels as students move on. I mean, you can do that if that's your preference. It's not my preference because you might have some students working fairly fast and I just never want to get to a point where I've got people waiting on me to get more activities ready for the station. So I prefer just to take a few hours, get everything done, get it out of the way, and then your station is done. And when I say done, it's done for probably a couple months because it's gonna take a while for students to work through this. So yes, the setup time is a little bit labor intensive at the beginning, but it will pay off because once you have this complete, it is set up for the next couple of months. The maintenance is very low for you. And once you've got your answer keys and your file folders labeled, that's actually done for next year as well. So it is a good investment of your time just to get this finished uh, right at the beginning. Now, introducing the station. My preference for introducing the station is to do it with small groups. So I like to have I like to do this during center time and work with maybe four to six students to introduce the station to them. Um, the reason is because I like to have them be able to touch the folders, touch the box, actually experience the station before I'm expecting them to do it in a more independent setting. So if I do it in a, in a small group, I can actually be with them the entire, say 15 minutes or 20 minutes that they're, that they're being introduced to the station. So that's my personal preference with introducing it. Um, also, take the time to really uh, tell students about your expectations. So 
I, I have pretty high expectations when it comes to organization because the last thing I need to be doing at the end of every day is reorganizing the station. And there's no reason that that has to happen. Your students are responsible enough to take care of this and to keep it organized as long as they know what your expectations are. So I really take a lot of time to explain to my students how I want the folders to stay. So the, the sheets have to stay paper clips together. That's my expectation. They just have to because then they're not flying all over the place. Um, the, the folder has to be organized with the sheets first and then the answer keys and the answer keys have to be in order. So A comes before B and everything stays neat and tidy in this folder. Um, I prefer to have students take out the folder out of the box when they're getting a new activity or when they're putting answer keys in because I find it prevents um, answer keys or sheets from being stuck into a wrong folder accidentally. So I get them to take out the entire folder and then put it back when they're finished. Now in my introduction phase in small groups, I even teach students how to use a paper clip. I don't take anything for granted because you probably have a lot of students who've never used a paper clip before. So I actually give them the, the opportunity to like take a paper clip off and practice putting it back on. And then when you get into the independent part of this, None of this is going to be an issue. There'll be no ordeal over paper clips or anything like that because they've already had the time to practice and they know exactly what is expected of them. So this can be, it has the potential to be very low maintenance as long as you take the time to really um, reinforce your expectations and introduce them at the beginning. All right, last but not least, I just wanted to go over a typical day of what this might look like in your classroom. So on any given day, um, I prefer to use this as a center, not as a whole class um, activity. The reason being is because you're going to have students back and forth to the station. They're going to be getting different activities as they move on to a new activity or a new level. They're going to be coming to get answer keys. They're going to be coming to get hands-on activities from this box. You're going to have a lot of people working with this box. Now, if you have a class of 25 students all working on this at the same time, you might have three or four students at any one time at the, at the station trying to get something out. You're gonna have all these little hands in here. Um, it, to me, um, classroom management just becomes a little bit harder when you have more people working on this. That's why I prefer to use it as a center activity. So you might have several groups in your classroom all working on different things. The, the multiplication station will just be one of those centers. So I like to have maybe four to six students at a time working on it. Then you're probably only ever going to have one person at the station at any given time. Um, now, what can you expect? You're going to have students, like I said, up and down, up and down. And that's actually a really good thing because it lets them move around a little bit. The only thing is, again, I'll go back to expectations. You need to reinforce to your students that when they are ready to get a new activity, they go straight to the station, straight back to their seat. There's no stopping and visiting with friends on the way. They're just, they're doing their job. So they need to know exactly what you expect in that respect as well. Um, so really, I, I just really encourage you to take the time. The first week you're gonna find that you are not only introducing expectations, but reinforcing them a fair amount. And then after that, this is just going to be a self-run activity where students know what they're doing. It's all very routine and it'll just kind of happen on autopilot. So that's your goal to get to that autopilot stage. Okay, so that concludes the support video for the multi-digit multiplication station. I really hope you love this in your classroom. I wish you all the success um, that you can have. And I would love to hear from you. So on my Facebook page, I love um, if you would come and share your experiences with me or send me an email or whatever works. But I, I would love to hear from you after you have a chance to use this with your students. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful.